they actually start um, on the topic. So let's open with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you've shown to us and, and for all the blessings you give to us, for the opportunity to be with you um, and to be with each other and to experience your love through each other. Be with us as we study your word and help us to grow uh, not only in our love toward you, but in our love for one another and for all of those that you bring into our lives in all different ways. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, so we are, if I mark this right, on um, 1 John chapter 3, right around verse 2. Or, and we're on page 6 in the study guide. Is it the top? Does it say, what does John mean by you yep. all know? Yep, yep. All right. There yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's stabled, so it's hard to find. Wasn't there class there. last Sunday? What's that? Was it? Didn't you meet last Sunday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. They did. I missed it, but yeah. Well, only because I forgot about it, and I thought, well, how come I have? This is where we start. <laughs> 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 Unless I forgot to mark it last time. Talk about whatever last. No, uh, you know no, we go the, off. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't always get real far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, maybe really tonight is twenty after. We just starting <laughs> now. <laughs> really? <laughs> how that happened? Uh, I remember from watching online. It was something about you left off with something about what is a child of God, or yeah, what does it yeah, mean so, to be a child of God? So that's right. Yeah. Well, you could hear it. That's great. Well, yeah, I could hear you. Oh, you could hear me. Yes. Okay. I had to, I had to use earphones and press them, but that's our c computer uh, audio. Not, oh. not Are you were an they onliner were last week. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah but the it. audio was definitely pretty lousy last week. So we've got, we got some people um, watching this week, and, and so I hope that um, people can hear. Those of you who are watching, if you can't hear. Let me know and I'll, I'll try to crank hand. it up. Yeah, raise your hand. Uh, yeah, right up. <laughs> Use the chat box or whatever. Um, so, uh, in all right. So, uh, in John three two, let's uh, for just for a refresher, uh, someone like to read John or First John two twenty eight through three three. You said First John. Yeah, First John. Ch chapter 2, verse 28, through chapter 3, verse 3. It's about five verses. Okay. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. <coughs> the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. All right. So, <clears throat> in chapter 3, verse 2, John says we will be like him. All right. That was the claim of the serpent in Genesis 3. All right. You'll be like God. Right? So, how are these two promises different? Because obviously what John is, is promising us here in the Word of God is not the same as the lie that the serpent was saying. So what's the difference? Doesn't, doesn't this refer to the Son rather than God? Okay, right. I think the very fact that it comes from it's the inspired... God breathed word from God himself rather than from the serpent so that you know you if you can't take that at what its word is you know I mean um, but they, are they looking for an actual physical mm -hmm. difference I mean because you couldn't have two more opposite ends of the scale there between Satan and God you know right. Satan's promises are basically all empty lies where God has kept every promise he's ever made mm -hmm. yeah all right so just taking a look at this verse again. Now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All right. <clears throat> we'll be like him because we will see him as he is. All right. But what? how is it that we get to be like God? <coughs> right. 
in in the garden coming satan said if you do this you'll be like god all right here it's um we are children of god right how are we children of god because of something that we've done no nope. no because of something god's done for us right and when he appears we will be like him because of anything that we do cool. no no it's because of christ because of christ i see so. right okay yeah. yeah so now you think about this all the way back to the garden of eden really sort of one of the angles there's so many different angles on that lie that the, that the serpent made in the garden okay if you do this but was, you yeah. will be like him if you do this that you can somehow get yourself to be like god or to get in with god um somebody brought me this morning a uh, an ad from the paper uh for joel osteen's new book and and one of the the, the ad was saying um that you can all right Trying to remember how it was worded. To increase in God's favor. And I thought, He already loves me as much as He loves Jesus. How could I possibly increase in His favor beyond that? You right? can't. You can't. You absolutely can't. And the only reason that I have God's favor at all is because of His grace, not because of anything that I do, right? And so that immediately, just like the red flags are just flying up. You know? There's so many people that think He's just the greatest thing since chopped liver, you know? And it's like, I don't get it. He's got the biggest church in America. Yeah. Huge. I, it's huge. Millions. I watched him one Sunday morning just recently. And any time mm -hmm. I've ever switched <clears> through the channels and seen the people I always think it's an optical illusion because there are so many people there they're yeah. really there and, and where is this the light I, uh, I'm not sure where his church is located but it. it's well, he know. is here. honestly I don't even know oh but it's on Sunday morning on TV yes and I don't know what channel because I'm switching yeah but I watched him one Sunday and his whole message that I watched that day was extremely uplifting but never one time did he mention the blood of Christ or saving grace, except at the very end. And I didn't know how to take what he said other than did he do that to make himself truly look truly Christian or did he really believe it? Because he told the gospel. I don't remember his exact words, but it was something about coming to God through Christ. Or, I, I mean, it was a true gospel message. Mm -hmm. And I had never watched his entire program before, so I assumed that he never preached the gospel. So he didn't preach the gospel, but he did tell it at the very end. So mm -hmm. I don't know ever what I don't know what to think about it. Right. Well, and you know what it comes down to is everything should be centered in the cross. Yes. Right. You know, and if if the cross <laughs> is an afterthought, then you've completely missed the point. Yeah. If it's <laughs> like an afterthought at the end of your message. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> yeah. 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 what I yeah. got <laughs> from it. So I wouldn't like. Oh, and um, so yeah, and that just that really concerns me that that's so popular. But what it comes down to is, people want give me tell me what I need to do. Let me check off the list. Right, right. So I can you know give me the, give me the Ten Commandments. All right, let's see. I haven't cheated on my wife. Haven't uh, haven't stolen anything. Haven't committed mm -hmm. murder. <clears throat> you know, mm -hmm. I'm in church every Sunday. I'm you know. And but yeah, but you know, when you look at it that superficially, yeah, sure, you could do pretty pretty well. Well, except for that first one about, you know, making God the center and focus of everything that you are and do. You mean by selling all your possessions, give them to the poor and then follow me? <laughs> you know. Right, right, yeah. And that was, that was Jesus' point with the rich young ruler. What do I need to do to be saved? Yeah. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor. Because uh -oh. <laughs> he's like, What do I have to do? Well, you know, what it, follow the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I've done that. 
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> what, that very first one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so give a synonym for the word hope as it's used in 3-3. Three, three. Everyone who has this hope in him... where we are on this page. 3-3. Three, three. Chapter oh, 3. On the study guide, about oh. halfway down. Right above uh, little Roman numeral 2. Right above. Yeah. yeah. Give a synonym for the word hope. Oh, okay. Sorry. I see it. Alright. So if you had to reword that, what, what word would you use there? I would put, um, say, abides or believes or... Okay, it's belief. Faith. 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 Faith in him. Sure. Right? Anybody else? Those are all good. When I, when I see the word hope in the Bible, usually when you look at it, sort of the context of, of what it's talking about... We don't use the word hope in usually in the English language the same way that it's used in the Bible, right? Because the word that usually when we say like, "Well, I hope he's okay," or you know, there's this sort of uncertainty to it, mm -hmm. right? But the hope that John is talking about here, if I had to replace that with with another word, and I probably if I were writing my own translation, I wouldn't use the word hope there just because we don't use it that way, I would use the word assurance. You, yeah. you would use the word what? Assurance. Assurance. Because the hope that, when the Bible talks about our hope in Christ, it's not, well, I hope so. Since we know so. It's, it's oh, being I an absolutely know it. Yeah. I know that I'm going to heaven. I know that I'm going to spend eternity with God because of what Christ has done for me. Mm. I don't have to say, well, I hope so. You're assured of it, right? If we say we assurance. hope so, then Christ pretty well hung there for nothing. Yeah. 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 Right. Because I know lots of people that say, <laughs> they say, well, I hope so, because they're counting on their own good works. And they say, I hope I'm good enough. Right. But... That's a really good terminology, Pastor. But yeah, Sorry. the Bible's all about assurance. It's it's yeah. it's um, oh, was in Hebrews, the faith is is um, oh, the assurance of things hoped for, and the uh, I always mess up that passage. Well, we just finished Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think I'd remember? <laughs> <laughs> That is, that's Usually good. I'm pretty good with quoting. I just can't find. I can't just can't give you chapter. And I verse. can probably find it, but can't quote it. And, and my problem, I, I quote that one very often, and I never get it right. So <laughs> I was have to go. It's something like. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um. Faith is the assurance. It's on it's chapter eleven, the beginning. Ah. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. There you go. <coughs> I had everything but the word conviction, actually. I had the rest of my life. But they used assurance and hope in the same sentence. Right, and so, yeah. So there it's... But it's... And there, that's where we really get that sense of Well, and in this case, they use hope like, uh, I hope. But it's... It because it's the assurance of what you were hoping for. Uh -huh. And now you have it. Right, right. And... And and in fact, even there, it's there's not the uncertainty. It's more the sense of of what you believe expectation oh. of looking to the future, the things that that I'm that that I'm I can't wait for it to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, not I'm hoping it happens. I'm just so excited that it's going to. Right, you're being it's sure of what you're. Yeah, your something that I'm looking forward to. You know, and all of that. You know, and so I, our, that's why I, I don't like the word hope, just because the way we use it, it's so weak. Mm -hmm. And and the way that the Bible uses it, and every time the Bible uses it, it's a, it's a strong, powerful word. And um, you know, so then you, when you get like and faith, hope, and love. 
those remain and um and you go well you know you, you look at us and faith hope and love those are all pretty weak you know our, our faith is you know so often or, or we struggle with um with all kinds of, of challenges and doubt and, and questions and and um and and, and hope that's a the way it's normally used is pretty weak and even love quite frankly <laughs> you know we don't love the way that we should and you know even right. um, even in the, the best of situations it, it just doesn't hold a candle to God's love and <coughs> what should we use what when in our everyday usage we say hope what well it depends how you you know well I'll tell you because I just wrote out a couple birthday cards, I wrote a note and then I, of course I sign off hoping you have a blessed birthday or happy <laughs> birthday or whatever. Well, you know, well, I always well, put hoping. Yeah, hoping. we are and, and I think, right, so in our everyday speech that's what we're talking about. Right. When we're not referring to God. Right. And that assurance. Right. We are hoping. There's no guarantee that the person will have a happy birthday. Right. So okay. we're hoping that right. So it's the same as I wish. Or right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is my wish for you, or, or this is my I, I'm. This is yeah. This is my wish. You know. That's that's probably um, the same thing. But but yeah. When the Bible uses this concept of hope, it's not a wish. Yeah. You know, and it's sort of like the um, like the okay, the benediction. No, this isn't hope, but it's the same kind of thing of of. The Lord bless you and keep you. That's not. That's not like. Well, I really hope the Lord's gonna bless you and keep you. They're like, He's gonna. All right. This is a. This is a blessing. This is. This is saying. All right. This is what the Lord is going to do for you. Um. And it's. It is. It's a. It's a like. May he. But you notice we don't usually say may the Lord bless you and keep you. It's yeah. it's sort of grammatically it's kind of like that, but but that kind of sounds like well I hope he does, <laughs> all right. But it's no 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 the Lord's gonna bless you and keep you, and he's gonna make his face shine on you and he's gonna be gracious to you and he's gonna look upon you with favor and he's gonna give you peace, all right. And he and he he has and he does and he will and and it's a you know it's it's a it's a very it's a powerful thing. It's not just well. Good luck. Look <laughs> <laughs> for that, buddy. Yeah. It's it's very uh, reassuring to like to, for the to hear that. Oh, it is. You know, it, it is. I just said, okay, I can get through another week. Yep. <laughs> you know? I, yeah, I really, truly, that benediction yeah. and the service to show. me. That, that's, <laughs> I can't even explain it. It's just you know when mm -hmm. when when you're up there, or even when uh, any pastor, when Pastor Paul is up there, just that benediction to me, it just I just feel an mm -hmm. overwhelming sensation that, yeah, God's going to see me through this week, no matter mm -hmm. what's going to be in store, and then I have no idea what it could be, and sometimes it's really <laughs> lousy, <laughs> but it, I, it, having that mm -hmm. kind of guarantee or that assurance right. that you're right, no matter what's going to happen, He'll be there with me to see me through it, and that's yeah, boy, you just you do you feel like you're right on cloud nine <laughs> when you walk out the doors. It's like. That's why I like the mission field sign because you're right. As soon as we leave this building, there's the whole wide world. Yeah. Here it is. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> and you don't know what it's gonna throw at you. Yeah. And and you know your comment about it doesn't matter which pastor it is or whatever. That's absolutely right because it's not the pastor; it's the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, here's there's here's a blessing, and and it's this is straight from God. And, and by no means, no disrespect, because I don't mean it. That oh way. no, absolutely! Right. I mean, it really, truly is. He I mean, must increase, and I must decrease. You know, <laughs> but but hearing that come, it, it is. It's God's yeah. personal way of reaching to each and every one of us to give us that that is that assurance, mm -hmm. that guarantee that you know. And oh, I just I get no, goosebumps all over my body when I hear it. It just makes I did me feel a, so good. Years ago, I did a, a series of cartoons, and one of the characters in it was a pastor. And and the pastor you you saw it was like a, a, a clerical collar and, and, and that and then but the face was completely blank. Like little orphan Annie, but not just the eyes, the whole face was blank. And the idea was that it's not the man isn't important. It's just the, the office. Oh, yeah. You know. And um and so that was that was that and um and, and that in fact is, is one of the reasons why um Lutheran pastors typically don't 
wear like ties or something like that and, and wear I mean there's there's all kinds of stuff but part of it is I don't want you looking at my tie going hey pastor nice tie all right or where did you get that tie? yeah or yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like the three stooges that's good you know? <laughs> but you know but to you know I want you focusing on the word of God it's the man isn't important you know? Shoot, we could put a bag over your head. <laughs> the unknown pastor. So, <laughs> so Remember the gong show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little holes, yeah. The little holes. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so that's right. The man's not important. It'd be gang gong. <laughs> <laughs> I always worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get gong. <laughs> you won't get the gong. <laughs> well, I, you know... I, you guys are pretty nice, but you know, I, I was a little bit worried about God going. <laughs> no, man, you know, now you do gotta worry about that. You overstep there a little bit, there, buddy. You know, they got a rich shepherd. Yeah, yeah you know, give the whole new meaning to I'm the good shepherd. You know? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah, yeah. yeah, really, <laughs> really. Thankfully, God is forgiving too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't gong us. <laughs> All right. Um, all right. So, uh, moving on. Uh, chapter three, verses four through twelve. <coughs> you want to read? Sure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God nor is anyone who does not love his brother. All right. These are some pretty heavy words. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So does God take sin seriously? Very much yes. so. All right. All right. How did he show us that? Through the blood of Christ. Yeah. He shed the mm -hmm. blood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anytime you, you think... And I think this is something that the Lutherans especially, it's a trap that we can fall into. And that is to not take sin seriously because it's so easy to go, well, God forgives me. You know? And so, like, and, and sort of, well, I can do whatever I want because God will forgive me. You know? And it's like, so if I go do this, will God forgive me? Like, all right, don't ask that question, all right? Because that's, you, you can't do this sort of, you know, Plan ahead. Plan ahead, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prepaid selling. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You can't get like a forgiveness gift card. Or <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> but but at the same time, you know, he does forgive us. And, and so it, it's easy to take that for granted, especially if you've, like, I mean, I, I grew up in the Lutheran church. All my life I've known about God's love and forgiveness. All right. And it's really powerful and amazing stuff. But it's also something that's so easy to take for granted that I don't fear hell. I don't, because I know God forgives me. Mm -hmm. Because of that, sometimes I can take it for granted. Because I've been conditioned to not fear God's wrath. Don't we all kind of do that sometimes, you know? I think we all kind of just... I, I know I do. I'd be lying to say I didn't, because you're right. It's very easy to think, oh, he does. He loves me, and he's already. I didn't like Flynn. <laughs> and, uh, I don't plan on sinning, but I, I find myself, you know, I think. I said I'm in like Flynn. I could be at work for five minutes, you know, and I'm thinking, gosh, now what did you pray about at church on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know, how weak am I that five minutes in? 
I did it again. <laughs> uh, it's all out you know? the door. And so I don't plan on it. I just do it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all do it. Yep. Right. And so, you know, so we look at this. And remember, John is writing this to Christians. Okay? Mm -hmm. Consider your, you know, the audience here. Mm -hmm. And he says, um, <clears throat> sin is lawlessness, you know, he appeared so that he might take away our sins. In him is no sin. You know, but, but you know, he, he's making it pretty clear. Sin, everyone who sins breaks the law. Sin is lawlessness. Right? This is a, and, and God is holy and just. Right? And so to sin is to go completely contrary to to the holy and righteous God. You know, and sometimes people talk about, well, hell, that's that's so unfair. Hmm. Right? And and I heard it explained this way once. You know, even if you sin once, and they say, why an eternity in hell for one sin? Right? Because it's an infinite God that you sinned against. Mm -hmm. Because sin is really that big of a deal. Right? And, but, like, you already answered the question, and that is, how does God show us that by sending Jesus for the blood of Christ? Right? Like I said this morning, he paid a whole Jesus to pay for us. I thought that was so That was exciting. a great answer. Wasn't that great? That was a great answer. I, I promised the student that I wouldn't um, use the name. Yeah. I, said, I said, wow, that's really good. I'm going to use that in a sermon. And... and uh, I said, "Can I use your name?" No. <laughs> okay. I won't. I won't identify you. But and that I was didn't really hear good. What your yeah. the statement was? Huh? Yeah, was, oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she was in a church. Yeah. I didn't hear what. Oh, you oh. said it here, but I didn't hear. Yeah, it was. It was. How much are you worth to God? What is He willing to pay to have you with Him forever? And the answer was this was in confirmation class. A whole Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big price if you think about it. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it wasn't just his toenail, you know, yeah. one piece of hair. Or, you know, I mean, it was the whole, you know, the whole, the whole, years. you know, and Jesus being the Lord of all creation. You know, the fact that he was willing. I think well, I'm not worth that much, but I am to him. That -hmm. that's the price he's willing to pay for me. And I was just, I was just, I was really taken aback by that because I've never heard it said that way. No, either did I. When you said it today, I just went, wow, that was... That, that was, was really profound, yeah, wasn't it? Yes, right. yes, it was. Yeah. It, it surprised it was. me that, that one of the kids said that. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. right, I I don't think at that age, what, what between 12 and 14 is the confirmation class. Mm -hmm. Um, if that wasn't inspired by yeah. God himself, yeah. nothing was. Yeah. And sure. yeah. No sure. question. I never heard it better than that. That right. just says it yeah. all. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm like, I am going to use that for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. That's awesome. I meant to tell you that, that I really liked that. <laughs> that was. That like, was I was like, all right, I can't let that one go. Yeah. That was great. And, and I thought, I'm going to use that eventually. <laughs> and then it was like, man, Perfect I could use that every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I probably better not, because then that person's going to get real embarrassed. But. Oh, that would take That's away six thing. years of bad confirmation class. <laughs> <laughs> Just that one. But, but you know what? I get that kind of stuff on a regular basis from the kids. I'll bet you we do. They're because, amazing. Yes, they're you know, and, and, and when they're like engaged in the conversation, and this was pretty impressive because it was the first night, and usually the first night of confirmation class, for one, they're quiet. It's like the only time all year that they're quiet. <laughs> all right. Um, but usually it's it's hard to get anything out of them that first night and stuff. And after that, they kind of loosen up and they start asking questions and, and talking and stuff. And and this was a new student to the class, too. And um, so it wasn't somebody that's used to being in class with me and that. And just to come out with his answers. Mm. Wow. <laughs> yeah. mm. that that's why I love teaching confirmation class. That is awesome. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> so... Three six. This is this is pretty powerful here. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Do you keep on sinning? Yes. Yep. Yeah, me too. All right. Do you know him then? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what's right. he saying here then? It's we don't have an attitude of sin though. 
Denise prays about her sin. <laughs> we all pray about our sin. We don't like it. We're embarrassed. We're ashamed. And it's not something that we poo-poo. And so I d it's, it's sin. We, we, we committed a sin over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But it is not a, a pattern of just throwing up your hands and saying, just go on with it. How c yeah, how mm -hmm. could you? How could you do that? You couldn't. Not one of us could do that. And that's where you're We'd be you're so you're convicted though by the spirit. Your own conscience is what's leading you to no, say, you know, why it did it I is do the that? Spirit. Yeah, it's the Holy Whereas spirit. I think this may mean that someone who does not know the love of God or right. knows the forgiveness of God, they're gonna sin and not think twice about it because yeah. God isn't an important part of their life. It Whereas with matter. us, yeah, immediately, at least I do, I feel so convicted. I'm like, you know, Father, forgive me. You know, I know I shouldn't have done that, what I just did. I shouldn't have lost my temper. I shouldn't have lost my patience. I shouldn't have cut that guy off even though he really made me mad. I, whatever it is, right. but but you feel that instant thing where you knew you should, you recognize that you did something sinful. And I think people that that don't know their Lord, you know, wouldn't eat that just two minutes later they'll do it again to somebody else and still not think anything right. about it. Yeah. Right. I have to give you a, an example. Um, there was a, a this, I was listening to a, a church leadership thing and this guy was talking about he's at one of these big mega churches and I've got a lot of respect for him. Not not everybody at mega churches is all sort of watered down your doctrine and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he was talking about they they have this this big youth room and. And this this new kid comes into the, um, and the, the, he's been invited by a friend or something like that. And he comes in there. And he goes, "Oh, you guys have a PlayStation Three? Yeah. Oh, and you have a Wii? Yeah. And you have Guitar Hero? Yeah. This is awesome." <laughs> 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 and, and, he, and, and he says, "You know, all right. In some churches, they would have like grabbed the kid, taken him aside, and said, you don't talk like that at church.' You know, wash his mouth out. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, but it, he goes, he goes, man, I heard that. I thought that'd be a good slogan for our youth program. <laughs> you know, I guess it, pro, Vice President Biden. Can yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he used a different word. It probably yeah. but but I you know, must have missed. but but." What, what he said about it, he said, you know what? This is a kid that didn't know Jesus yet. All right? Yeah. And so we so often, as the church, try to, to sort of legislate people that before we tell them about Jesus. All right? He says, you can't expect people who are lost to act like they're not lost. That's a great point. And I heard somebody else said it in a different way that sort of the same thing. You can't blame the world for acting like the world. Yeah, and if you're newly found, he may not yet have learned, you know, in his excitement. Right. He may not have yet cleaned up his right. vocabulary. Right. And it, well, in this case, he was, I mean, he didn't know Jesus yet. Oh, he was okay. just, he happened to be invited by a friend. He said, hey, come to youth group. And he went, okay. You know. And, and he was um, just. Yeah, and he was just—he was just like, "Oh, this is all this cool stuff," you know, and um. Well, that's kid talk. I mean, I. What's that? Uh, th that's just the way kids, kids being would kids, talk. Right. Well, exactly, kids being kids. I mean. Yeah, and um. So, I mean, but I yeah. I wouldn't take offense at it. But I mean, oh, you look at me. you look at all right now using something a little more serious. All right. Talking right. about there's a lot of talk in in our society about gay marriage. Okay, now you can debate all of the um, sort of sociological things and uh, child development when you're talking about adoption and you know and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but when people are, are when Christians are getting up in arms about about homosexuals and saying you shouldn't you know be doing that and and that's wrong and that's sinful and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know what? If those people don't know Jesus then we really shouldn't be surprised that they're right. wallowing in this sin and enjoying it and saying what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Because why is it a big deal? Because God has given us marriage as a reflection of his relationship with us. That you have Christ in the church, the husband and wife. Right? If you don't know you're the bridegroom, 
then how are you supposed to know how to act like a bride? How are you supposed to know what marriage truly is about, that it's a reflection of the love of Christ? Right? First, we got to tell them about the love of Christ. And when you've got, you know, churches that are out there, and I use the term church loosely, um, who are, you know, protesting and, and, and stuff like that, and, and, and saying God hates you because you act like this, and, and so, like, now hold on a minute. No, no he doesn't. That's, no, God loves you, and he wants you to, to know his love, and, and um, you know, and, and I'm not going to, you know, for me to tell you how to act, there's really no point unless you know why. Because otherwise, you're back to what we were talking about before, about, well, just check this off, check this mm -hmm. off, and then God will love me. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, that's not how it works, mm -hmm. right? No, you need to know that sin is sin, right? Because otherwise, you're not going to repent of it you're not going to recognize the value of forgiveness. Okay, and so there's a kind of a fine line there. Mm -hmm. And we, we certainly can't say, yeah, it's okay. But, um, but yeah, telling people how to act and sort of, you know, being all, acting all morally superior and stuff like that, that, you know, I'm sorry, but even in faith, we're not morally superior. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we fall short all the time. When you become a Christian... <laughs> You don't get better. You're just more aware of your faults. <laughs> we, we strive to be, and you know, ideally we would be. But I mean, let's be honest about it. You look at at divorce rates. Guess what? You look at divorce rates among Christians and compare them with with non Christians. It's the same. Oh, what did you say? It's the same. Divorce rates. Yeah. It's the same. The same with Christians okay. and non Christians, right? Um. You know, and and it's just, I mean, it's it's sad, it's embarrassing, right? Um, I I like to hope that in at least in in some areas somewhere, the Christians do a little better. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I I like to think that's probably the case. Certainly, all right. When it comes to disaster relief. It's usually the Christians that are first to jump down and, and help out, you know, Haiti, Katrina, whatever, you know. Um, but, you know, really, we can't, as, as soon as we go, oh, see, there's the Christians, they can, like, lift up ten other things that we stink at, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. and, and because being a Christian isn't about being perfect, um, or, you know, it it's about and getting back to the question it's about not wallowing in our sin I was so hoping that you would be a pastor that's not going to be preaching about divorce <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've gone through it and man every pre every minister no matter where I've gone yeah it hits home and it hurts <laughs> I'm sorry so be it <laughs> well, it is. It's, uh, well it, you know it's a hurtful thing it, it but shouldn't it show our, our 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 real human nature that hey, just because we are Christians, we're still human beings, and we still have the same faults that people that aren't Christians have. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, and that's why I get so frustrated when people do that kind of holding us up to that. Oh, you've got that holier than thou attitude because you're a Christian, huh? And I'm like, no. You know what? <laughs> My pants go on the same way yours do, buddy. One <laughs> leg at a time every morning. They don't just stand up for me to leap in. You know, I mean, it just, you, you know, I still make the same mistakes. So again, it goes back to that. But you're right. You know, I know people do esteem us and, and hold us to a higher standard, but. It's to me. It's really refreshing to tell people that maybe don't even know Christ. And I may not even know. I'm aware that I'm talking to a non-Christian. But just let them know. You know what? Okay. You know. Yeah. I'm still a human being. You know. What I mean. Yeah. We're still going to make mistakes. But it's the fact that we know where to go and go back and, and turn and repent and say, you know, we're truly sorry for the things we do. Mm -hmm. And and that's probably the hardest thing. Just the divorce thing. And I'll get off that. But it's just I can't even imagine how awful that is when. If you have that relationship where it is a one-sided thing, and one of you really wants to make it work, but the other one doesn't, you're you're already fighting a losing battle. Mm -hmm. So at that point, why does that make one person right and one wrong? It doesn't. It's just a terrible thing that happens, you know. But we should be as open and forgiving about those things. Well, and and what it comes down to is God knows what it's like, because lots and lots of people have cut it off with Him. Yeah. 
and and so he feels the pain and 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 he knows what it's like and um you know on on the one hand that's why it upsets him so much because he can say been there done that um but at the same time you know when you feel the pain because of it god says i know what that pain is like i i know mm -hmm. that pain all the time mm -hmm. and it's still not Right. Um, <clears throat> all right. So then, when you sin, whom do you serve? Three, well, seven. that was pretty easy. <laughs> Devil. Yep. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and and that's the thing. It's sin isn't just whatever. You know, it's it's not just a sort of um, <clears throat> uh, spiritual faux pas. You know, with, oh, it's bad etiquette or or something like that. No, you've. No matter how little the sin, it's treason against the kingdom of God. It's aligning yourself with the devil and taking the devil's side. And, and that's something that you know, we, and I think part of that because we take forgiveness for granted so much, that it's it's so easy to um to sin and 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 without really thinking about it or you know we think about it afterward and, and we feel bad about it but um it you know why is it a big deal because you just you just committed treason against god's kingdom treason's a big deal mm -hmm. and um and this kind of ties in with what we've been talking about a little bit what's the danger of normalizing sin right no no one who is born of god will continue to sin because god's seed remains in him he cannot go on sinning because he's been born of god yeah, that's that's just it if you if you normalize it it means you're abiding in the sin rather than in god yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh it's no big deal right but then what are you doing? You're choosing that sin over God. And it's idolatry. Right. I'm saying, I'm going to, you know, this, whatever it is that where I get, I'm getting pleasure out of this or I, I'm um, um, trying to avoid pain or, or just making my life easier or, or whatever that I'm doing, this this sinful action, um, that, that I'm going I'm to do this to make my life easier. Um, but what am I doing? I am choosing that over God. And um, <clears throat> and uh, you're you're God's child. How can you choose? You know, you think about it in the in the family sense. How can you you choose? Somebody comes along and 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 says, "I'm gonna um, I, I want to kill your whole family." Well, that's not so bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, and that's that's what the devil is out to do. He's out to destroy our families, all right? So we take his side. It's like it's like you know, finding an an escaped axe murderer and 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 saying, yeah, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> Need a place for the night? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. The cutlery's right over there. <laughs> In case you need it for anything, you know. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but no, it's so well, true. I mean, it, 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 you laugh because it's ridiculous. And yet, that's what we do. Mm. Mm -mm. All right. Um, let's stop there. Would be nine twenty five twenty six. Right. Let's close the text. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for calling us your children. We don't deserve to be, and yet you claim us as your own. We ran away from you, and you called us back. And. You came to get us, and, and and you continue to do that over and over and over, and, and we're ungrateful. 
we um, we continue to every time you you bring us back to you we, we keep pulling away and and just mm. chasing after all of the sin we, we mm. side with the devil who's trying to destroy us and it doesn't make sense and, and we don't even understand why we're doing it and yet you still love us and you forgive us and, and you call us your children and so we thank you for that and we ask that you just open our hearts to uh, to recognize the love that you have given to us and enable us to share that love with all that we meet. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.